In this video, we're going to talk about four Mexican journalists who have been killed in the last five years. This represents only a fraction of the total number of journalists assassinated in Mexico in recent years. Miroslava Breach was 54 years old in March 2017 when she was shot to death in her car outside her home in Chihuahua City. She was in the car with her 14-year-old son, whom she was about to drive to school. Her son was unharmed, but he watched his mother get shot eight times. She died on the way to the hospital. Breach was a well-respected journalist who had written for La Jornada, one of Mexico's most important newspapers. She also wrote for local publications in the state of Chihuahua. She wrote about complex issues such as criminal organizations, political corruption, and human rights abuses. Through her journalistic work, she served as an advocate for poor, exploited, and displaced communities. Shortly before her death, she had written about local mayoral candidates with ties to the criminal group Los Salazares, then a cell of the Sinaloa cartel, who controlled the rural areas where these municipalities were located. One candidate for mayor of the municipality of Chinipas was named Juan Miguel Salazar. The candidate was a nephew of the leader of Los Salazares. Miroslava Breach exposed this connection between the PRI party and Los Salazares in these rural mountain communities in Chihuahua. A conversation with Miroslava Breach was recorded by an official from the PAN party, which controlled the state government at the time. In the recording, the PAN official tries to ask Breach who her sources were in the municipality of Chinipas. She declined to name her sources. During the federal investigation of her murder, it was made known that this recording was given to Los Salazares by PAN officials. Outside groups have investigated the case of the murder of Breach, and they have pointed out a lot of uninvestigated leads. A report from an international team of investigators found five other murders after breaches that appear to be connected to the case. They mostly seem like the elimination of witnesses and co-conspirators. Whatever the details, most evidence points towards organized crime and corrupt government officials being responsible for the murder of Mrs. Breach. Ruben Espinoza. Ruben Espinoza was an award-winning photojournalist killed in Mexico City in 2015. He worked for Proceso, a, na a popular national news magazine. In the last few years of his life, he became more of an outspoken activist about the murder of journalists in Mexico and the lack of investigations into those murders. His co-worker at Proceso, the crime reporter Regina Martinez, also based out of Veracruz, was tortured and killed inside her home in the capital of Veracruz in 2012. Towards the end of his life, Espinoza received verbal, in-person threats in Veracruz. He chose to move to Mexico City, essentially being exiled from Veracruz. Once in Mexico City, he gave interviews explaining the corruption in Veracruz, the assassinations of journalists there, and the threats he had received. He was 32 years old when he was found dead in an apartment in Colonia Narvarte, with signs of torture, along with four female friends. This photograph taken by Espinoza of the then governor of Veracruz in a baseball cap and with his stomach hanging over his belt is often referenced in discussions about the enemies Espinoza made from his photojournalism. No conversation about murdered Mexican journalists is complete without mentioning the former governor of Veracruz, Javier Duarte. Duarte was the governor of Veracruz from 2010 to 2016 and is well known for his hardcore corruption and close ties to organized crime. Twelve journalists were killed and four went missing in Veracruz during his tenure as governor. In 2016, corruption scandals caused him to lose his affiliation with the PRI party. He resigned his position and then disappeared, but was arrested in Guatemala and extradited back to Mexico in 2017. He's currently imprisoned in Mexico. Nana Pelucas. Pamela Montenegro was killed in 2017 in Acapulco, Guerrero. She had a YouTube channel where she presented political satire as the character Nana Pelucas. She gave commentary and interviewed local officials. Pamela Montenegro was also a restaurant owner. She was at her place, A Todos Los Santos, in Acapulco, on February 6, 2018, when two men entered, ordered two beers, 
approached the YouTuber and shot her in the head. She was accused by some of being the secret administrator of a Facebook page called Acapulco Uncensored, which presented info about organized crime. But she denied, she denied those claims. There were actual narco mantras, the big banners that mentioned her, threatening her. But her husband claimed that those weren't real and that they were only hung up long enough to be photographed for social media. He seems to be suggesting that the matras were hung up by people associated with the city government. About a year before she died, she recorded videos stating that she had no ties whatsoever to organized crime and that if anything happened to her, the local government of Acapulco is to blame. The independent cartel of Acapulco is often mentioned in conversations about her death. Javier Valdez. Javier Valdez was 50 years old when he was gunned down in the street, blocks from the offices of the weekly newspaper which he had founded. Valdez was a prolific and highly respected journalist based out of Culiacan, Sinaloa. Essentially a Mexican crime gonzo journalist, his work often focused on unlikely actors in the narco world, such as beauty queen girlfriends, orphans, child sicarios, and the mothers of the dead. He wrote several books and is possibly the most high profile journalist to be killed in Mexico. There is a particularly nice article about his life and work written in English in Esquire magazine by his friend and colleague Ian Grillo. The most common theory about why he was killed concerns the front page, this front page article about the split of the Sinaloa cartel and the final arrest of Joaquin Guzman Loera, El Chapo. The article contained an interview with Damaso Lopez, the leader of a splintered car Sinaloa cartel. In the article, Lopez criticized the, the sons of Go Guzman Luera, known as Los Chapitos, who controlled another cell of their father's former organization. When the issue of the paper containing the interview was about to be distributed, representatives of Los Chapitos contacted the paper and asked for the interview with Damaso Lopez not to be printed. The decision was made to go ahead with the printing and distribution of the article, but as the delivery truck dropped off editions of the paper, they were immediately bought up by employees of Los Chapitos. But the article was still made available on the website of the publication. Javier Valdez was shot to death in the street less than a month later. Currently, Mexico is seeking the extradition of the son of Damaso Lopez, Damaso Lopez Serrano, who they claim was the mastermind of the assassination. Lopez Serrano had turned himself in to US authorities in July of 2017, supposedly because he feared being killed by Los Chapitos. As stated earlier, these journalists represent only a small fraction of the total number of journalists killed in Mexico in recent years. Thank you for watching.